Professor Dave here. Let's use subjunctive with relative clauses. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. As we learned earlier, relative clauses normally add realistic details to a noun called the antecedent. When this happens, the indicative is used. Rita ha trovato un appartamento che non costa molto. But things will change when the antecedent is a person or thing that does not necessarily exist, but rather is desired or hoped to exist. In this case, not surprisingly, based on what we've learned recently, the mood will switch from indicative to subjunctive. Let's look at the same sentence in a slightly different way. Rita cerca un appartamento che non costi molto. Is she going to find it? We don't know. Maybe she won't be able to afford anything in this area. The subjunctive mood is required to express the uncertainty of this possibility. Here are a few more examples with pairs of sentences. The first using indicative because it describes a known fact, and the second using subjunctive because it describes the same situation but with uncertainty. Conosco qualcuno che vuole lavorare qui. Conosci qualcuno che voglia lavorare qui? Ho trovato una persona che ti può aiutare. Hai trovato una persona che ti possa aiutare? Let's put this to use. Say you are looking to buy a house and there are features that you hope your house will possess. For each thing you want, you could construct a sentence that starts with Cerco una casa che and then we can use the given information with an infinitive listed to write the correct form of the subjunctive and finish the sentence. For example, if you hope to find a house with three bathrooms, you could say, Cerco una casa che abbia tre bagni. Let's try some more. Take the infinitive and write the correct form of the subjunctive. Cerco una casa che non sia troppo cara. Cerco una casa che includa tre camere da letto. Cerco una casa che sia circondata da molti alberi. Cerco una casa che si trovi in una strada tranquilla. Cerco una casa che offra un caminetto in salotto. That puts us a little further in our study of the subjunctive mood. But before we move forward, let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.